Good morning, it's Lewis, and I'm going to show you how to fit some bucket seats in your Toyota iGo. No one's done this yet, so let's get into it and cue the dodgy intro. Damn, son, where'd you park? Right then, so to be honest, I wanted to make this video because I've always wanted to put bucket seats in a car, and of course my choice was the Toyota iGo, but no one has put on the internet on how to one take them out two do the resistors and three just genuinely do it <laughs> so i'm going to try and clear up some of the confusion that might come with trying to do all the resistors and putting the bucket seats in um so it's going to be a fairly quick and over video um let's get into it let's not waste any time before you can put bucket seats in any cars you're going to need one of these bad boys and that's a tape measure and um, simply just to make sure if you are buying seats then you want to make sure they fit so and um, the first thing you want to do is obviously measure the base. That's not the base, what is that? So there we go. So from pillar to pillar, and then obviously you want to take your bucket seats, if you've already got some, or if you're looking to buy some, measure from the chest across the chest across, basically the widest point of the bucket seat. And you want to see if you times that by two, if you're having two bucket seats, um, if, if they'll squeeze in. If they don't, then they're not going to fit. But I, I measured mine to perfection got about a two finger gap here um, and then we're quite close to the pillars as well I had to take the plastic bits out just to give me that little bit of clearance getting them in um, but that's the first step you always want to measure and make sure they fit in the car first before you buy any set of bucket seats otherwise you're gonna have a nice paperweight sat in your bedroom or garage step two I guess then is getting the stock seats out obviously I can't show you this in this video because my stock seats are already out However, on the Toyota Igo, it's really, really easy. You can't see, but on the standard rails, there's one bolt here and then one bolt there. If we just quickly move around to the front, you'll be able to see. And then you have another bolt here and another bolt here. So these are Torx bits. You just want to get a Torx bit and gun those out. Um, after you've done that, the seat should tilt back and it should reveal this, what I call the biggest pain in the ass ever. If you Google some of the pictures or try and find someone who's tried to take this off, you'll struggle to find anyone. So hopefully this video will give you an idea of how to get it out. But all you really need is two screwdrivers. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen now to kind of show you what I had to, I sat around fiddling with for an hour. Um, I'm going to show you how to take this out now and um, hopefully it'll clear up some of the rumours of this car. So bear with me two seconds while I go grab some screwdrivers. The nice thing about stripping your car is the boot mat for the back of the car makes a really good kneeling pad. So when you're doing stuff like this, you've got some comfortable knees. Right, we've got the screwdrivers. So I'm going to struggle to try and show you this, but what I did essentially is in this clip, um, you want to ram a screwdriver down the back of here. Um, it works in kind of like a tab system. So you can, if you try to get a screwdriver in there and it's on the tab system. So you have to push the tab up. However, this little green thing does not work very well. Um, when you've pushed the tab down, all you've got to do from there is simply try and pry it off with the other screwdriver. To show you what I mean, I've wedged the GoPro in the in the bucket seat. So what I did, one screwdriver in here when the car has the battery disconnected, obviously. And then when, once you've pried that bit up, you can put a second screwdriver, and there is a bit of plastic here normally, um, but then you can just twist this and that can act as the prying movement. Um, you'll feel a little click and then the whole thing should come off and that separates this inner part with this bit that was attached to the original wiring harness. Um, I can show you what I've done with the wires in terms of how to get the resistor off the um, the resistor on there, sorry, and get the airbag light off the dash. Um, but I took this whole thing off, wired it all up, obviously very dodgily for the time being, um, but it took a while to try and find um, someone who actually knew what they, they were doing. So hopefully this will be also a clear guide on how to wire up the uh, resistor. So what I've done temporarily is um, I've got these kind of clippy things that connect two, two wires to each other just so I could test it out and test the theory on some of the forums. I found one secret forum where it ended on a, a really quiet note of I'll go get the light reset and I'll tell you how it goes and no one actually came back so I ended up doing it all myself. Um, so you'll have three wires, you'll have an, a yellow and an orange so that'll be your earth and, and your, your live so if you are taking the clip out please disconnect the battery and leave it for a minute just to make sure everything's disarmed. Um, this kind of green and yellow wire, you don't need that, so I've clearly marked that with a bit of electrical tape. The next one 
so it's simply a case of buying these resistors online. Um, I got these off eBay, they weren't that much, they were about £10 for two. Um, I've got a picture here if you want to try and find them yourself. And then you put that all together and then the light goes off. Obviously I have an aftermarket steering wheel as well, which um, I've wired up to the the light here. So this is this came with the boss kit and I've done another clippy thing here and um, that got the light off the dash as well. Another thing that will set your light off on the dash, and I didn't know this until I read all the codes through the scanner, is the um, the seatbelt tensioner here. This wire actually can set off the airbag light as well. So temporarily, I haven't got a resistor for that. However, I've just popped the seatbelt back in and then tucked the standard seatbelt just down the side here. So um, it looks crap at the moment. However, but for show season, I'll try and uh, get some resistors because obviously I don't need the standard seat belts with the, the seat belt harnesses. But in terms of wiring it up, that's all you need to do. So um, hopefully that's the first time that someone's actually explained how to do the wiring on it. But if you do need any help, don't hesitate to go onto my Instagram and send me a DM and I'll, I'll happily send over some pictures. Um, link to that will be in the description. So um, yeah, if you have any questions about the wiring, just give me a shout and I'll, I'll help in any way I can. So, I guess after that, you've wired up your uh, thing, you need to then bolt your seat to the actual car. So, you've gone onto eBay, you've bought some side mounts for your Sparco seats. The nice thing about the iGo is you can either do a flat base, so you can mount it solidly, or quite conveniently, this, <laughs> the rails meet up with the... Um, um, the side mounts so what you can do is you can you can mount it up to the standard rails and still have that flexibility of moving your seat backwards and forwards um, what I did as well is I've got quite long legs so I ended up offsetting it back a bit so I get a bit more leg room and then um, also gives me a bit more knee room under the steering wheel as well um, what I'll do is I'll just quickly cut to me climbing under my seat so I can show you what I mean yeah fast forwarding under here when you remove the standard seat off the seat rail, you'll have three prongs sticking out of the seats. I brought in my little handy um, Sealy torch so I can try and get a better idea of what we're looking at. Ignore this bolt, that's for the um, that's for the harness, so don't worry about that. But you'll have one bolt here on the standard seat rail, one bolt about here, and then one on the front. What I did is I just sawed that one in the middle off so I didn't have to bolt it, and then it slotted perfectly into these slots that came with the um, Sparco seat rails. So there wasn't a lot of adjustment in terms of what I needed to do. And then as soon as I nipped that one off, it slotted in perfectly. Just a case of bolting it up then. And it's really that easy. You've got a Sparco seat or whatever brand you like the best in your car. And then I guess the next step is harnesses if you're that crazy and setting those up to the car. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll show you what I've done in my setup. It has required a an extra bit of metal however there is two ways of doing it so so for MOT reasons one thing I will point out is your seat must move it must be able to adjust in forwards and backwards and um, if it is a five door I don't think reclining is an issue so we don't have to worry about that in terms of seat belt these are street legal and road legal four point harnesses um, they are Sparco they're all up to standard they are they are graded correctly and bits and pieces like that so they will pass MOT there are some rules and grey areas around bucket seats and harnesses. However, if you do know a good person that will happily explain some of the rules and it might just mean a simple bolt in, bolt out, seat belt transition. It might be a case that you just want to bolt a, a standard seat belt harness to the other side of your seats. And maybe when MOT comes, just bolt the uh, seat belts up. So you do have a, a standard seat belt and then these are just an addition, but then you can always take those out after. So. That's a bit of cake. So in terms of how I actually bolted the harnesses up, um, we've got one in the standard seatbelt kind of position down here. So that's the bottom of the seatbelt. Then what I've had to do on the bottom side is I've had to just extend the size of one of the, the adjustable bolts here and just put a 10 mil bolt through it. It works quite well and um, it allows you to obviously move the seat and keep the harness relatively snug as well. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, in terms of going to the rear, I didn't do a bolt-in because when people do bolt-ins they end up being quite dangerous. You want to make sure you don't have the harness directly bolted to the car because that could cause spinal compression and bits and pieces like that if you are in an incident. So you need to have it at a safe angle as well. I think it's... A, you can get diagrams, I can put one on the screen now for you, but mine's roughly the angle you want it at in terms of the lowest you want to go. 
people do have um, harness bars that go straight behind and directly through the holes, so that's the best way you want it wired up. In terms of the strut bar, it's simply just a few millimeter bolts, and I think I got this off the internet somewhere. I don't really know where I got it from. I just Googled Igo strut bar, and it works as a great harness bar as well. That's not going anywhere in terms of me in the seat. So I did temporarily have them bolted down to here just because I didn't have a strut bar in place, but I would not recommend that at all. That can lead to some serious issues. Um, the strut bar is the way I always want it to go, but I have used it as a harness bar in this scenario. So I know how to wrap harnesses properly. They're all, they're all in safely. Um, do make sure if you are wrapping your harnesses, you, you wrap them correctly so they do not move if you are in a sudden accident. We cross our fingers that we're not. However, these seat belts will give you a bit more protection in terms of staying in your seat. And, but that's about it really. I'll, I'll do a quick, a quick overview in terms of the um, resistors as well because that'll be quite handy because no one's done that yet. So in terms of steering wheel, it's simply a case of two wires. You just need to put the resistor into those wires. So that's that job done. You want to put a resistor in here or just put the standard connection on the standard seat belt. That will throw up signs if you do not have those in. And finally, all you want to do is get the orange and yellow wire and connect the resistors to that. The yellow and green one, that doesn't do anything, so don't worry about that. It's just simply a case of wiring the resistor into those two lights there. After that, you just want to get the faults cleared and they should all be good to go. The, the, dash, the light will come on the dash normally and then go off. It's worked for me so far. If anything does change, I'll let you guys know. Um, but that is about it in terms of putting bucket seats in an iGo. I don't think it's really been done on the road before. So if you are looking to do the same, you've now got a rough guide on how to do it. If you do have any questions, like I said, don't hesitate to give me a, a bell on my Instagram and I'll, I'll happily help and send over any pictures if anyone needs them. Um, but in that case, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, guys. And I hope this was a useful video. And um, Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you very much.